Our scripture today is found in the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger, said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. <coughs> but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life. Through believing, you and I may have life in his name. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you for your word. Bless your word to us today that it may change our lives. In your name we pray. April 15th. Talk about a faithful day. Do you know what are some particular things that happen on this day in history? Anybody know? Jackie Robinson. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Jackie Robinson works for me. <laughs> First baseball game. Wow. Titanic. 100 years, right? 100 years ago today. Right. What's that? Yesterday. yesterday was 100 years. Okay, yesterday. Okay. That was the day, Amen. <laughs> Anybody else? What else is today? Faithful day. Next day. Next day. Next day. <laughs> Next day. <laughs> also related to that, this is the day President Lincoln was shot. Uh, President Lincoln was shot on this day. Wow. Also, for a long time, taxes have been due on this day, although we get one day, because it's a Sunday, tomorrow. Two days. You can't be today. What's that? You don't get it because it's Sunday. You get it because of the Emancipation Proclamation. Really? Washington is closed tomorrow. Okay. Fine. Amen. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ready the season. Lincoln, when asked if he was on the north side, responded, I am more concerned about being on God's side. The Titanic reminds us that humility trumps hubris. Who could ever forget the line that has been said, you know, not even God could sink this ship. Humility trumps hubris, our overweening pride. Something that also is timeless today. 
and every day for believers, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. This is the time to live into, to live in and into our Lord's resurrection. Today we have Jesus' encounter with the disciples and Thomas. These encounters are written down to help us to be everything that we can be in Jesus Christ. That is to be fully engaged disciples. At the very least, pointed in the right direction towards Him. And there's three things I want to lift up that this scripture can give us today to be more fully engaged disciples. First is this. Jesus gives peace to us. By the way, verse 19, fear is acknowledged. It's part of the human condition. His first message is peace be with you. He doesn't say to the disciples, I have issues with you. You all, you know, left me, you know, hanging out there on my own. He says to them, peace be with you. You know, he doesn't promise wealth or health or prosperity. What he promised was peace. He didn't change the circumstances that the disciples were in. He changed their attitude toward the circumstances. And it's interesting. You know, when Jesus is giving his disciples this peace, this power and authority to do the right thing, to, to live right, to be new and changed people, he, showed them, he shows them his scars. Scars are important. Jesus is showing his credentials. Scars can be a sign of our investment. Some years ago, Nike put out a commercial called Just Do It. And it was athletes. Joel Cocker is singing in the background, you are so beautiful to me. And it's athletes showing their scars. A surfer showing a shark bite. A wrestler showing a cauliflower ear. It's one minute and one second. And Nelson is giving me the high sign that it's available for our viewing right here. <laughs> Me and my brother, we went by and just saw that door open and decided to slam it shut. 
right on his leg. Another time we had, when Frisbees were first out, had one of those first Frisbees, it must have been about a pound and a half. Okay, and I went to throw it to my brother, Grandpa came out, down in his little cottage down in Villas, New Jersey, and I nailed that guy right in his totally bald head. Oh man, he was a pious man, but that day I think he used some off-color work. <laughs> another time, another time, okay, I'm in the car, Grandpa is decked out in a blue suit, hat and everything, I'm praying with this little playing with this little squeeze bottle of one of his ketchup packets. Oh, <laughs> oh man, it shot in the back seat of the car. I don't think my grandpa was ever so happy to drop me off at home. Then. <laughs> Big and small, even being a grandparent, you know, you're gonna have some, you're gonna have some marks. Scars, big and small, they tell stories of investment. Several years ago, a young mother, extremely fit, tennis player, sharp lady, she went to pick up her young toddler son at the pool, and she went on a tile floor. And in one of those moments where you start to slip, and it's like slow motion, but you can't stop anything, she was like seven months pregnant, she was about to fall on her seven month pregnancy and her little child and she had a choice, fall on them or go on her knees on the concrete. And she went on her knees on the concrete, busted both knees open. To this day, she still wears a knee brace. And to this day, she wouldn't trade that moment for anything in her life. And the scars I talked about, grandpops, what I showed on the wall, they're minuscule examples of the immense sacrifice and love Jesus has for us. He has scars. Through these scars, we have a peace that passes understanding. And we have a power and authority to do the right thing. God can take an ill wind and do wonderful things. In NCD, we called it energy transformation. We've got more scar stories we can tell you. You have to come to adult Sunday school, though, to hear them. Jesus turns our scars into stars because of what he has done. Second thing here, we begin to see the role of Christian community. And there's one word here, witness. Now Thomas here is the witness of the other disciples, and he says, i got to see for myself. This means nothing to me. But it's interesting. You know, sometimes we're with other people, and... I'll be frank with you, sometimes they, more, they got more faith than we have. Sometimes they see something that we don't see. God sets it up that way. He puts us in a community together. And the good word this morning is that Thomas stays with the community. Even though he's out it. He hangs out with them. He doesn't leave. He sticks it out with them. The Bible tells us as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I often tell people two most important things in life. Know Jesus is your Savior and find your spot. Everybody gets a spot. There's this old time preacher story that is out in the Midwest. This is centuries old. A minister goes out and makes a call on the frontier at his little frontier church and the guy says, no, I don't think I need to come to church anymore. And the minister didn't say a word. They were both sitting in a fireplace. And all the minister did was he took a poker and he took one of the coals out of the fire. It was bright red. And he just put it right on the brick hearth. And it went out by itself. The preacher didn't say a word and he left. For he made his point. By ourselves, we're an ember that will go out. In Christian community, 
We can be everything that God calls us to be. A week later, Thomas sees for himself, but not without a word from the Lord. Jesus said to him, if you believe because you've seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We're called to come to believe in a power greater than ourselves who will restore us to sanity. We're called to make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand them. So point one in this passage is God can turn the ill winds of our life into great blessings. The cliche, scars of the stars. The Christian community is very important in our faith. Particularly when we're in a doubting mode. It's a good place to hang out and to be a part of. And Thomas, thank God he doesn't check out. And the third thing is God calls us each to have a personal faith. This has all been written so that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That's the whole reason of the Gospel of John. That Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in His name. To be fully engaged in the kingdom of God or at least to be headed in the right direction, we're called to have a personal faith in Jesus Christ. I, I don't know how you can have anything that God wants you to have without that. Personal faith in Jesus Christ comes in many stripes and flavors and in denominations and there's a lot of family out there. But that's the bottom line. To have a personal faith in Jesus Christ. A personal faith that will lead us to do the right things in life. 